Okay, this one's about doing a nitrogen or CO2 pressure test. So, assuming you're ready to pressure test, the refrigerant is all out of the system, and you're going to just pump up some pressure. I would take the Schrader's out of these two taps, leave these valves open, probably how they were when you got there, and hook up your gauge set to those taps, and then we're going to run some pressure in it. Okay, here we have a uh, model plate. I just wanted to show you where this stuff was, where the design pressure is on these. Now this is a 410A unit, so it's very high pressure. Now, you see you got design test pressure, high side and low side, 450 and 250. It's showing a maximum design working pressure uh, of 700. So, according to this, you could put 700 pounds of pressure in this thing. That's a pretty high pressure to put in them, but uh, if you can find the leak at lower pressure, I definitely do it. But those are the maximums that you can put into this system. Okay, here I have the cylinder set up right here and my uh, yellow hose here is hooked up going up to uh, a gauge set here. Now I'm going to turn on the valve on this thing and turn up the regulator. Okay. Now the regulator is loose and you'll see your pressure here on the uh, on the gauge and then I'm going to start turning this regulator up now everything else is shut off so nothing can pass through now you see that gauge is going up and we're at a hundred almost hundred pounds Now I'm going to put this thing up to about 150. Now, the reason I'm using 150, this is an older unit, it's an R22 unit. Some of the compressors were not designed to uh, withstand more than 150 pounds. So you've got to be a little careful on some of these things, because when you pressure this up, you're pressurizing up the entire system, and that includes the compressor cam. So, I limit them to 150 pounds unless I can eliminate the compressor. So okay, I'm up to a little better than 150 pounds. And now I'm going to go to the gauge set. Now a little something to be said about these gauge sets. Okay, this is a digital gauge set. And uh I can put whatever pressure I want on this low side gauge and I can also put it on the high side gauge. There's no problem with that. If it is an analog set, I'll get an analog set for you. If I'm using an analog set like this, now what I'm going to do is I don't really want the pressure that I'm going to put in this system on this low side gauge. It usually does not damage them anymore. They've got a kind of a retard, they call it a retard thing, that is supposed to keep it from damaging it, but it can. You see, this only goes to 120 pounds, and uh, uh, you're putting 150 on it, and that's too much, and in some cases you can put a lot more, so I would just not hook up this, uh, this low side uh, hose. Keep these uh, valves off, and just hook up the high side hose, and you're going to watch your pressure on the high side. Okay, in this case we're using the, the digital gauges, and for this the digital gauges are pretty good. Uh, let's get down to where we can see more of this. Okay, I've got this hose here coming off the regulator, that valve's open. And if you follow the yellow one up, it goes right to here. And 
these two valves are closed so I have pressure in this yellow line all the way to here now I'm kind of a big deal on bleeding everything even though your system may be have air in it I still usually bleed whatever lines I can now this one here is coming from there I'm gonna bleed it and these two hoses here uh, I don't bleed them here I bleed them down at the uh, valves and that bleeds any air that's in the system out if you constantly bleed almost everything except vacuum lines you won't get in trouble when you stop bleeding things you're gonna make mistakes so uh, now okay I'm showing virtually no pressure in here now I'm gonna open this side and I'm gonna open this side now I tend to line, like to back seat all these valves because there is a back seat that will lock them or that will uh, seal okay now the pressure is going to start going up here and uh, it's going to settle down somewhere uh, around 150 Okay, now I'm going to shut these off. Okay, both of these are shut off. Don't get rambunctious about turning these things really, really tight. They've made these knobs small so that you can't put too much torque on them and damage the, uh, uh, the seats inside. Tighten them up snug, but no more. Okay, now I'm showing 149 on one, 149.2 on the other. This, these valves must be off because if there's a leak and I left those valves on, then it would just keep adding uh, pressure into the system and I'd never find the leak. Let it settle down for a little while and see if you got a leak. Now let's kind of know what we have here 148.8 and 149 and we'll leave this thing I you know you can watch them right away although they tend to kind of bounce around a little bit for a while. Uh, and So I usually leave it for about 10 or 15 minutes, do something else, and then come back and take a look. Okay, you can see here I've left this about a half an hour, and we're kind of maintaining the same pressure. Sometimes it'll actually go up a little bit if the, if the ambient temperature is rising. Uh, you make sure all that your fittings are tight if you start seeing leaks. Uh, if it starts dropping then you're going to have to start looking for leaks but uh, make sure your fittings are tight and one of the first things I check when I have a thought that I got a leak is I start checking these and I'll make sure they're tight you don't have to get crazy on them but make sure they're tight and I oftentimes soap check those things uh, as long as you're holding pressure for a half hour you probably got a pretty good system if it has if there's been leaks in it and you're attempting to find the leak then uh, maybe you better start spending a little bit more time with it one of the things you can do while you're uh, uh, waiting on this thing is start leak checking some stuff get some soap or whatever uh, you can't use uh, an electronic on this unless you mix up a little R22 with it uh, but you can soap check all sorts of fittings to make sure there's no problems 
And that's uh, pressure testing. I'll go into uh, pressure testing different parts of the um, system later if you start finding leaks.